Have you ever misidentified somebody? From across the room, you're like, oh, hey, how you doing? And you walk over there, and when you get closer, you realize that's not who you thought it was. So, so just as a tip, this is what I do. If that happens, I was like, hey, hey. And then when you get closer, you realize it's not them. You just keep walking like you're talking to somebody else. <laughs> past them. No, really, I, I actually, because of my personality, I want to talk to people that I know. And so I've done that a lot. Uh, and so now I get to the point where people, uh, you just act like you're dumb and people are like, yeah, he's dumb and then move on. It's no big deal. I'm like, oh, I, I totally forgot. I thought you were somebody else. I apologize. And maybe you can make a new friend that way. Who knows? So uh, lots of us have misidentified people. We, we, we do this a lot, I think. A lot of us have anyway. Or maybe you've seen a, a little kid and, and kids, because of their perspective, they're, they're, you know, they're way down here. It's hard for them always to, to see or they're, uh, most of the time they just see legs. And so sometimes you, you'll see a, a little kid walk up to another guy that they think is their dad until they they look up and you, you see that face of terror like, oh, you know. <laughs> most of us have done that and have misidentified somebody at some point in our life. Well, if you're not, if you're brand new with us or if you've not been around for a little while, what we're doing is going through a series called The Story. And it's actually 31 weeks long and we're calling them chapters. And this week we're in chapter 25. But the story is all about God's desire to be with us. It's about the Bible. And the Bible is about that, God's desire to be with us. And in fact, in each chapter of the Bible, all throughout the Bible, the story is about the identity of what we're going to be talking about today, the identity of the Messiah. Who is the Messiah? The Messiah is God's plan to be with his people. And so all throughout the Old Testament and every chapter and continuing in the New Testament, the Bible is about the identity of this Messiah that was to come. And you guys remember, those of you that were here, remember when we talked about uh, the promises that God made to David, and that, that, that God told David that on his throne there would be a, a son like him sit on his throne forever and ever and ever. So the Jewish people were all excited about this Messiah that was to come so that we can have this, 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 this Messiah that would lead us again to be the great nation that God has made us to be. And, and, and later on, as we went through the story, we realized that they were captured and taken into captivity, and they got, got released from that and were able to come back and rebuild the temple and later rebuild the walls and study God's Word again. And so all throughout that time, as we were heading into the New Testament, they were looking forward to this Messiah that would lead them out of the hand of Roman oppression that would lead them to be this great nation that, that God established them to be uh, from the very beginning, and starting in chapter 1 until they became a nation after they were released from, 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 from Egypt. And so all of this pointing them towards this idea of this Messiah who was going to lead them. And, and, and Jesus comes onto the scene. And as Jesus comes onto the scene and he, and he uh, grows up and he becomes this guy who leads people and people are following him. He's doing miracles by, by healing people and he's feeding people and, and he's taking care of people's needs. The question began to arise, is this the one? Is it possible that Jesus could be this Messiah that we've been looking for? And so as they follow Jesus for, for, a, for a year and for two years and, and, and toward the end of his ministry and, and three years long, uh, a lot of people were beginning to say that I think that this Jesus is, is maybe that one. And a lot of people weren't sure and it was kind of an easiness and, until last week when we talked about some of, some, of the, some of the teachings of Jesus where he said things like, if you want to have life, then I'm the bread of life. Then you need to partake of me. And so many people turned their backs on him. And he was claiming to be things that, that caused people problems. And so because of all of that, there was this kind of, this kind of identity issue with Jesus. Who is Jesus? That's the question that they ask, and that's the question that we're going to be asking this morning. Actually, I got to this week on Periscope. For those of you who don't know, I, I, there's a, a Periscope is an app. We're, we're live streaming on it right now. So it's a pretty neat thing. It's a, it's a, it's a way for us to get online and, and connect with people all over the world. And, and I do this most every weekday morning about 8.30 or so is... Um, unless I sleep in or don't feel like it or whatever. Then, then I get on there and we just talk about stuff in the Bible. And, and on Monday I actually was reading from Luke where we talked about some of this stuff about Jesus' identity. And, and I want to say to you what I said Monday is that this is the most important question that you will ever answer in your life. Amen. Who is Jesus? Who is this man that we call Jesus? And all of us, whether we like it or not, whether we want to or not, all of us at some point or another will have to answer this question. No one gets stopped out. Everyone must answer, who is Jesus? 
And so this is an imp incredibly important question for us. It was an incredibly important question for them in the first century as well. And so what I want to do is begin by looking at some of the struggle that they dealt with in trying to answer this question. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to be reading starting there in verse 13. <clears throat> If you don't have a Bible, if you didn't bring one with you, then feel free to grab one of those in the pew in front of you. If you don't own a Bible, we would love for you to take one of those home with you as a gift from Snellberg Christian Church. If you're looking in your storybooks, it's going to be on page 353. 353. <clears throat> so let's start by reading Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? So what Jesus was doing is, is he looked at his, his disciples, the people that were following him, the people that he spent so much time with, and he says, who's everybody saying I am? I mean, what are, what's, the, what's the talk? I mean, what are people saying? When people talk about me, who do they think I am? What are they saying is my identity? And the disciples replied in this way. Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Now, Jesus knew that this question was so important that he began asking his disciples. And I believe that, that for more than, as much as anything, he was trying to teach his disciples uh, how to answer this question or how to deal with this question. Maybe even get a feel for where they were with this question. Because I think that Jesus had a pretty good idea of what people thought. <clears throat> But they were saying that maybe he's John, John the Baptist, which is kind of funny because John the Baptist was a contemporary with Jesus and John the Baptist had been killed. A lot of people were saying that, that John was killed and now he was, now he was Jesus. A lot of people were saying Elijah or Jeremiah, Old Testament prophets, or, or maybe another prophet. And so what we see when we, when we see this response is that the people during Jesus' time had this kind of this mixed reaction over the identity of Jesus. Who is this guy? Where does he come from? I mean, is it possible that he could be the Messiah? I don't know. Maybe he's John the Baptist or Elijah. So these are some of the things uh, that, we were, that they were hearing at that time. And, and they knew that there had to be something different about him. They knew that there was something special about him because they knew that these miracles that he were performing was real. They knew that, that he was feeding them. They knew that he was healing the sick or raising people from the dead, as we saw in the video, raising a, a Lazarus from the dead and others. But, but something was unique about him because of their messianic expectations, this idea of what they thought the Messiah was supposed to be. Jesus wasn't really fitting into that mold. And so they weren't for sure. Is it possible? I don't know. Were, you know, this, this question, you can kind of feel this kind of idea like, I don't really know what's going on. And so they struggled in the first century or during the, the life even of Jesus of, of who is Jesus? And it's a question we struggle with today. And maybe some of you have this question settled, maybe some of you don't, but, but definitely outside the walls of the church, the, 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 the people at large understand that this is a difficult question. Who is Jesus? I think, and this is certainly not scientific, but I think if you were to go out and ask a hundred people who is Jesus, you would get about 80 different answers. That's a guess. Maybe more than that. Maybe a little bit less. Who knows? But, but this, the idea is that people struggle with this. And it's because we have certain expectations. It's because we, we expect things to be different than, than what they are. We think that, that, that if God is going to come to earth in the form of a man, maybe he would be different than Jesus. Or maybe some of us have been mistreated by the church, and so we disagree with the church about all kind of things. Or maybe we're not sure because our parents taught us, and we never really looked at it our own way. But for whatever reason, people have, have, have an issue, struggle with this idea of identifying Jesus. And just like Jesus was misidentified 2,000 years ago, Jesus is misidentified today. So a few years ago, I was preparing for a sermon much like this. In fact, I, I didn't look it up. I, I'm certain I still have it because of um, I've got most all my files digitally, but um, I, it was maybe even the same title. But I, I did a, a sermon uh, where I was talking about this identity of Jesus. And, and so what I did is I, is I made this video. And I think I showed it here maybe like the second time that I preached here um, four years ago. Um, but, I, but I'm going to show it again today in a, in a moment. But before I do, I want to do, do a little disclaimer. Now, the video was recorded eight years ago. When I watched the video, I didn't see anything. I mean, it looked fine to me. And I went and I showed Aaron. I said, what do you think? I'm thinking about showing this Sunday. I said, what do you think about the video? He said, it's good. He said, you were so young. <laughs> <clears throat> to me, it was like looking in the mirror. I didn't see a change. <laughs> but when I, when I looked at it for, through eyes like Aaron was saying, I realized that I didn't have any gray hair. I was um, a few LBs lighter back then. <laughs> so what I want you to do as we watch this video is to try to look past that 
and just watch what people are saying. It's actually on the University of Kentucky's campus. I went around with, with my good friend Kelly, who I'm always talking about. He's the one holding the camera. He's actually got his finger in the way on a few shots. But uh, he's holding the camera, and I'm, and I'm asking people the question, who is Jesus? Let's watch that. Who is Jesus? He can be seen through good deeds of everyone throughout campus or the world. Uh, I don't think it really matters if Jesus is necessarily real or fake. It's just like he's an example for us to follow. Uh, he's basically the perfect example for us to follow, to stay on the right path for whoever we think God is, just to get to heaven. Um, well, Catholicly, he's the son of God, but like for me, it's just like people that are good at heart and try the best for everyone and just do the best that they can and help everyone with whatever they need, just being a good person. Jesus is the son of God and he came to save the world. He's the uh, most powerful man on earth, and uh, I feel like uh, he's the most perfect, uh, you know what I'm saying, person that anybody can have in their life. Jesus is a man of miracles, in my opinion. Jesus is Lord and Savior, and it um, doesn't really matter if you accept him or not, he still is that. And a saint. Uh, someone that I can look up to to guide me. Uh, Jesus is the Son of God who uh, rose from the dead to um, pretty much make up for all our sins. Or despite how I may go off path, that someone you know already took care of all, all my mistakes and things like that, and I can just correct them and keep moving on. A uh, prophet. Someone who um, has is enlightened and has um, really has an understanding and a, a very distinct connection with whatever higher power is in existence. I guess in a, in a way, I guess he's everybody. In a sense. Um, he was sent by God to save us. I have to agree with that. Uh, I see Jesus as the creator of heaven and the earth. Uh, Jesus was a very important figure who lived uh, on our time scale from 0 to 32 BC or AD. Uh, some people believe that Jesus was magic. Uh, a lot of people forgot that he made lunch for everybody. Uh, I'd say Jesus is someone that people believe in, um, who devote their lives to. So it's got to be something pretty special. Jesus is my savior. I love Jesus. He's awesome. It was so interesting because uh, as we did that, I could just see the struggle, right? And I can remember, I, I can remember back that far ago, eight years. Um, but I, can, I remember the seeing people's wheels begin to turn like, like, like they've heard the name of Jesus and they, they, they know a little bit about Jesus. But no one has ever asked them the question, or most of them at least, some of them probably so. Who is Jesus? Or how do we, how do we identify him? Who, who is this? And you, you heard him say all kinds of examples. Savior, uh, a good person, he's a saint, he's a prophet, or just a, a good example for us to follow. And these were some of the same answers that people were giving in the first century while Jesus was still around. And so the question still remains then, who is Jesus? Now, there's a lot of, of common responses today. I've listed just a few of them, and these are common responses not only today, but, but common responses back during the, the life of Jesus. The, the first one that I wrote down here is that Jesus is a man of morality. And a lot of people will say that today. Jesus was a, a moral man who liked to teach, and he, liked to, he, he did good things, and he was a good guy doing good things, teaching uh, morality to humanity, how to treat other people, how to, how to deal with who you are and, and kind of be a good person. Now, if we think about it, that seems like a pretty good possibility. If we're looking for ways to identify Jesus, maybe that's it. Maybe he's, a, he's just a, a good person, a man of morality, someone who taught morals, taught us how to live in society and all of these type of things. Maybe that's a good option. Another option is this, uh, that Jesus is a liar. I mean, maybe Jesus is not really who he said he was. Maybe he was just making all that stuff up and doing all those things and, and kind of some sleight of hand stuff. And, and I don't know how he did those things, but, but I just think Jesus was a liar. A lot of people believe that. A lot of people actually believed it in the first century as well. In fact, in John chapter 7 and 11 and 12, we, we read this. Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, Where is he? Among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. 
Some said he's a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. And so a lot of people, even in the first century when Jesus was around, was calling him a liar. He's not real. He's not legitimate. Even then, that's the argument. Is Jesus a, a moral teacher, a moral leader, or is he a, a liar? Because the truth of the matter is, you can't be both. You, you can't be both a, a habitual liar and a moral teacher, because a moral teacher is not a habitual liar. Those, those two things can't happen at the same time, in the same sense. I mean, is, is Jesus a good teacher and a good man, or is he a liar? Another common response then, and, and I think to some degree probably today as well, maybe not as much, but, but that Jesus was just crazy. I mean, that, that Jesus was kind of a, out of his head, you know, and he said some crazy things. And a lot of people will actually go around. There's actually people today who claim to be Jesus, right, or claim to be God. Uh, we, we, we have them seeking help, and we call them, um, you know, they've got issues, or I don't know, how do you want to say it, but if, if behind closed doors when we're not afraid to hurt anybody's feelings, we'll call them crazy. Because people like that are crazy. If you claim to be God and you're not God and you actually believe it, either one, either you're lying or if you actually believe that you're God and you're not God, then you're then you're crazy. And that was the, the thought of Jesus then, too. In fact, in John 8, verse 52, they said this. At this they exclaimed, after Jesus had talked about um, those who obey him not seeing death, uh, they said this. At this they exclaimed, now we know that you're demon possessed. They said that to Jesus. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the modern vernacular. Man, you're crazy. That's what they were saying to Jesus. You are crazy. You're, you're demon-possessed. You're crazy. We, we know that you're not right in your head. And so those are some of the things that they were saying back then about Jesus. And that's some of the things that we're, we hear people say today as well. But what about those who were following him closely? What about those guys who were, who were with him all the time, who, who, who ate with him, who traveled with him, who saw him teach, who saw him heal, who saw him do all those things? What, what did they say? Look at uh, Matthew 16, verses 15 and 16. After they had said, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets, Jesus said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? He's looking at the guys that follow him. He says, well, well, who do you think? I mean, that's what the crowds are saying, but what do you say? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And so Peter recognized this, this Messiah that they'd been searching for and waiting for and longing for is this guy that's standing before him. And I don't think that Peter fully understood what that meant or grasped that in that moment, but, but he was beginning to realize, and as the other guys probably were too, that this Jesus is the one. He's the one that they were longing to have, or longing to look for, longing to see. And so you can begin to feel this tension, right? So the disciples are, are saying that Jesus is the Messiah. And some who, others who were beginning to follow too, becoming disciples likewise, were beginning to say that Jesus is the Messiah. And others were saying, no, he's crazy or he's, he's a liar or he's uh, whatever. He's not that one. And so there's this tension going on among the people about the identity of Jesus. The crowds were saying he was a good man, crazy person. The disciples were saying he's the Messiah. So how do, we, how do we resolve this tension then? I mean, I mean who's right? I mean, can they, can they, they can't both be right. But so, so, so how do we figure this thing out? Well, I think we have to go to the source. What did Jesus say? Well, what did Jesus say about his identity? Who did Jesus say that he was? They called him a liar, but what were they saying that he was lying about? Well, I want to give you just a few scriptures, and we'll uh, go through these uh, pretty quick. But just here are a few scriptures that reveal to us about what Jesus said about himself. John chapter 8, verse 12 said this. When Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, in this, Jesus was beginning to give a little bit of his identity away. He was beginning to tell people about who he was because the Jews knew that this kind of spiritual light that Jesus was talking about only can come from God. And so when Jesus says this, when Jesus says, I am this light, I am this spiritual light that, that gives light to those who are walking in darkness, Jesus claimed to be God. He claimed to be this source of spiritual light that the Jews knew could only come from God. And they were right to, to think that, by the way. They were right to think that only this uh, spiritual light can come from God. But where they had a disconnect was, was realizing that, that Jesus was that light that he claimed to be, was that from God. And, and as Jesus began to claim these things, this caused a, a friction between the Jewish leaders because he was claiming in this sense to be God. I am this light. I am this spiritual light. I am from God and of God and, and God. 
And they knew that, that only God could do that. So it caused this tension between Jesus and the religious leaders. We saw that in the video at the end as well. And so Jesus claiming to be this light from God. Here's another one. John chapter 8, verses 23 and 24. But he continued talking to the leaders. You are from below, Jesus said. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. So here we see Jesus again making a claim about his identity. Here he's making this claim that I am otherworldly. I'm not of this world. All of you, or Jesus was talking to the disciples or talking to the Pharisees, all of you are of this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm, I'm otherworldly. He's, he's claiming to be from somewhere else altogether. And the Jews again hated this because they knew that only God was like that. Only God was this otherworldly being that could talk about dying in your sins or not dying in your sins. And they knew that only God could speak in those terms. And here Jesus was doing that. And as he was doing that, he was, he was letting them see, he was revealing to them his identity that Jesus is God. And they knew that, that in doing so, he was, he was claiming that. Again, here's the big one though. In John chapter 8 still, verse 58, Jesus said this. Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am and we've talked about this verse before a little bit, I think, but, but it's kind of a difficult verse for us to, to read or understand because it, it almost doesn't make sense because he's talking about Abraham and he's talking about what was happening in the past. And he says, before Abraham was born, which would have been a long time ago, right? Before Abraham was born, I am. Now, because we, we like things to be neat in, in, in the way we speak in English, some of us, uh, we like things to make sense, and so I am is in the present sense, right? And so, so Jesus really, if he was going to say it correctly, at least in English, we would say, before Abraham was, I was. But Jesus wasn't trying to be correct in his grammar. Jesus was making a statement. Before Abraham was, I am. Now when he said this, this would have taken the Jews all the way back to, where were we? Probably in, in chapter 2. Or maybe a little bit after, though, maybe chapter 4. But anyway, taking them, yeah, chapter 4. All the way back to chapter 4 where, we're, where we talked about Moses. And if you remember, we talked about Moses and he was coming up to the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. He comes to the burning bush and out of the bush, Moses hears the very words of God. And Moses, if you recall, God was asking Moses to go to, to Egypt and, and save my people. And, and Moses, like most of us, he said, God, I, I, don't, I don't know that I can do that. I mean, I'm not really eloquent in my speech. And, and God says, oh, come on, you can do it. I'll, I'll make sure that you'll be all right. And then Moses says something like, well, I don't, you know, I don't know. And he makes up some more excuses. And finally, one of his excuses were, I don't, I don't even know who you are. What am I supposed to tell him? That I, that I heard a voice from a bush? No, tell me your name and I will go and tell the people of Egypt that, that you told me to come. But, but I need to know your name. What's your name? And God told Moses, he, he said, my name is... I am. And again, that, that, that almost doesn't make sense to us. But what Jesus was revealing or what God was revealing to Moses here is that I am perpetually in the present sense. I am forever before time began. I'm before the end of time. I am always I am. I'm perpetually in the present sense. I'm the creator of all things. All things came about through me and I am. And so when Jesus here in John chapter 8 is, is arguing with the Pharisees about his identity and he says to them, before Abraham was born, I am. He's revealing to them that that same being that was in the bush is him. And the Jews, if we were to read the very next verse, they picked up stones and they were going to kill him. You know why? Because he was claiming to be God. And if you claim to be God, either you're a liar or crazy or... As in Jesus' case, it's true. And you really are Him. So Jesus claimed here to be God. And I, and I get a chance to talk to people who aren't Christians all the time. I, it's, it's funny, I say this, I get to talk to them, it's on Periscope. Um, it, when a lot of times people will say, well, Jesus never claimed to be God. Well, He obviously did. If you understood context at all, like in this verse, it's, it's, it's patently obvious that Jesus claims to be God here. But, but, but people will say he, he never claimed to be God, but he did over and over and over. In fact, um, probably the, the most pushback that I get from, from people who say that Jesus never claimed to be God are, is from, from people who are um, Islamic, people from the, from the Muslim faith. Because they, they don't believe that Jesus is God. They believe that Jesus was a good guy, 
um, taught, did, taught some good things, was a good prophet, but, but he never claimed to be God and he's not God. But, but obviously we see that Jesus claimed to be God. And you can't be a good person and claim to be God if you're not God because those, that would make him a liar and that's contradictory. And, and in fact, C.S. Lewis in his, uh, had a famous quote that I'm going to read here for you from his, from his uh, short little book called Mere Christianity. C.S. Lewis wrote this. He said, I am here trying to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. C.S. Lewis says, that's one thing we must not say. A man who, is, who said this sort of things, or a man who said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make the choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman, or something else. You cannot shut him up for a, or you can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him, you can kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let no one, not, let, not, let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He never left that open to us. He did not intend to. So who is Jesus? Uh, a great man, a good man, a liar, a crazy person, or is he God? And so that's my question for you. We'll wrap it up with this. Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say Jesus is? This is the most important question that you will ever answer in your life. Either he's a liar and those things that he said about equating himself to God are not true, they're false. In which case he's not a good person, he's not a good moral teacher. Or, or he's crazy, or, and this is what I believe, that Jesus is God. That Jesus is God and of God and from God to be the Messiah to save the world. To, this whole story is about God's desire to be with us and he sends to us his son. And again, this is complex. This is more complex than I can understand. How is God in three parts? How is God the Father and the Son and the Spirit and sends His Son and it's really Him? I don't, I don't understand how all that works. Well, what I know is that God is in, in essence one God, but in, in Him there are three parts and, and Jesus is one of those. And He came to save us because He loves us. You know, crazy people, I mentioned it earlier, claim to be God all the time. But it's only crazy to, be, to claim to be God if it's not true. And if Jesus is God as he claimed to be, uh, then your answer to this question uh, changes your life forever and for all eternity. Ultimately, as, as we will find out and talk more about next week, Jesus' identity, who he was and who he claimed to be, actually led, leads him to his death on the cross. And we'll talk about that next week as we prepare uh, in two weeks for Easter Sunday, for, for Resurrection Sunday, remembering the, the death and resurrection. Next week, death. The week after that, the resurrection of Jesus. But my question for you is uh, not only, one, who do you say Jesus is, but, but, but once you come to a conclusion, once you answer that question, what are you going to do with that? Now, I mean, most of us probably here identify Jesus as the Christ, as this Messiah that was the foretold. If you do, what are you, what are you doing with that? And I talked to you about sharing this idea with, with people you know all the time as we uh, prepare to come up on Easter Sunday, it was Resurrection Sunday, in two weeks. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. And one of the easiest things we can do is invite people to be a part of our gathering, it's, it, especially around Easter because people expect it. And, and a lot of times people are looking. They're thinking, you know what, I, I haven't been to church in a long time. Maybe I can go. And so that is a, is a simple, short, easy way to, to introduce them to this idea that, that Christ died for us to save us from our sins. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Hopefully you've been praying about somebody you know. Share that opportunity. Somebody that you know, lives near you. Somebody that you work with. Whatever. Family. Whatever. I want to make that our, our Easter Sunday as special as it can be with so many people who don't know Jesus. Don't understand about his identity. Uh, for those of you who, 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 who aren't yet sure, haven't yet answered that question, we're going to give a time, we will call this our, our time of invitation. If you haven't yet answered that question or come to a conclusion about this, this identity of Jesus and you're not sure how you, how you identify him, then we're going to give us, during the song, we're going to
have an opportunity for you to come and let me tell you more about that, what it means to follow Jesus, put your faith in Him and uh, for salvation. If you don't feel like doing that coming forward during this time, of, then there's, there's some cards, some connection cards in there that you can fill out. If you drop those in the offering plate, um, then, I, then I'll be able to call you and we can do that um, without everybody looking at you. That's all right, too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say a quick prayer. We're going to sing a song. And I want you to reflect on that. If you, if you already understand the identity of Jesus and you've already come to your conclusions, then think about, pray to God about what He would have you to do as we move forward. If you're not sure, uh, then think about what that means for you as well. So let's pray. Father, I, I love you and I, I thank you for, for this. And I thank you that Jesus was as plain as he was about his identity. Uh, Lord, there's, there's lots more scriptures we could look at about to understand who he is. But, but him saying I am is so powerful. And Lord, I, I just pray that you would help us to remember that, that. That you came down to save us because you loved us and you want to be with us. Lord, for those of us who have already answered, I pray that you help us, guide us, lead us into to how to incorporate this into, into who we are and our everyday life and sharing the good news about Jesus with everyone we know. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.